Hello everyone, Amy here, and just before we begin, I want to really quickly give a shout out to Skillshare, who are now working with us here on What Culture Comics to help you access all sorts of great classes, but more on that later. In terms of key elements from the world of the Dark Knight, few things are as synonymous with Batman as the iconic Batmobile. Simply put, for as long as there's been a Batman, there's been a Batmobile for him to cut about in. So from its humble beginnings as a sporty hot rod to the more modern tank-like incarnations that have run amuck in Gotham, we have a lot to get through. I'm Amy from What Culture, and here are 10 secrets of the Batmobile explained. 10. The Origin as a concept, the Batmobile has been around for just as long as Batman himself. The Caped Crusader famously made his first comic book appearance in 1939's Detective Comics issue 27, and this first appearance also saw him driving around in what would come to be known as the Batmobile. Back then, rather than the all-singing, all-dancing Batmobile designs we've all come to love over the decades, this then-unnamed vehicle was just a red car that helped the Dark Knight race to the scene of any ongoing crimes. This very basic, very bland, and design was tweaked by the time of Detective Comics issue 30, where some background info saw it explained how this car was a custom-built, super-powered vehicle. Six months later, in Batman issue 5, to be precise, readers would be greeted by the first major evolution of the Batmobile's design, as a hood ornament, wing-like tail fins, and a darker colour scheme would be applied to Bruce Wayne's vehicle of choice. Of course, this wouldn't be the last overhaul to be seen by the Batmobile, as time and time again, DC Comics introduced new design after new design. With Bruce Bruce getting busy splashing the cash to create a multitude of different Batmobiles, not to mention knocking up the Bat Wing, Bat Boat, Bat Cycle, and a whole slew of other various vehicles. 9. The Top Speed Talking in a broad sense, because let's face it, analysing each and every Batmobile would take forever, the Batmobile's basic engine allows the vehicle to hit a cool 230 miles per hour. By any car's standards, that's an utterly insane speed, yet the Batmobile is technically capable of achieving an even higher one. Given how Bruce Wayne has been known to add boosters to the Batmobile over the years, the most extreme speed that the turbo-assisted Batmobile can get to is somewhere in the region of 350 miles per hour. With some such a ludicrously powerful machine at his disposal, this gives a clear indicator of just how focused, disciplined, and an all-out great driver Bruce is. It also showcases why so few people have ever been trusted to drive one of Wayne's multitude of Batmobiles, because it takes a special kind of skill to handle a vehicle capable of reaching such scary speeds. The tight, jarring streets and corners of Gotham City also mean that the Batmobile's chassis and suspension have been tweaked and customised in order to assist the car in navigating the city's twisted, tumultuous landscape. 8. The intense security in place Chances are any drivers out there will probably have an alarm and possibly even a steering wheel lock in place on their own car. Forever one to maximise the technology, smarts and resources at his disposal, Bruce Wayne has done his utmost to make sure the Batmobile is impenetrable when it comes to security threats, whether that's from supervillains, global terrorism organisations, or simply your average street thug. Across the decades, the Batmobile has been protected by a hard exterior shell, an electric defence field, panic-inducing fireworks, Works, automated weaponry, having the structure of a genuine tank, disorientating gas, and of course by so many more of the gadgets and toys that the Dark Knight has to hand. Added to this, so many of the Batmobiles seen over the years have had a feature included that means the vehicles can be accessed and controlled remotely, causing many a would-be thief or foe to be deterred from further afield, thanks to Bruce, Alfred, or one of the other Bat family members controlling the Batmobile from afar. 7. The Onboard Science Lab one of the elements that has come and gone at times for the Batmobile is the vehicle's onboard science lab. This feature is one that actually dates back to the early days of the Batmobile, with the first few incarnations of the car having a full mini laboratory in them. After all, given Batman's reputation as the world's greatest detective, it only makes sense that he would have some science gear to hand as he whizzes around Gotham City and beyond. Whether it's to analyse a crime scene, concoct a serum, or run one of a variety of tests, that miniature lab has proven to be invaluable to the Caped Crusader in his day-to-day crime-fighting mission. In more recent years, instead of the concept of stashing a full lab in the Batmobile, Batman has resorted to a more minimalist approach. These days, Bruce tends to carry a choice few select items with him on his travels, with advances in technology meaning he can now use smaller pieces of tech that still get the job done. Also assisting on this point is the fact that the Batmobile has a direct line to the greater, vaster facilities back at the Batcave, which actually links in nicely to our next entry. 6. The Batmobile is linked to the main Bat computer. 
It's well known that the back computer system put in place by Bruce Wayne is often the envy of the DC Universe's heroes and villains. Bruce is one of the most intelligent people in the realms of DC Comics, and the bat computer is the epitome of what makes Wayne tick. As in, it houses so much pivotal information, is capable of doing so much, has an insane eye for detail, and contains plans to take down pretty much each and every major player from across the galaxy. Bringing it back to the Batmobile, the kit and tech on these fleet of vehicles all have instant links to the Bat computer, meaning that Batman always has a huge amount of capabilities at his fingertips when tearing it up around the streets of Gotham. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we're partnering up with Skillshare, and now I'd like to tell you a little bit more about why. Skillshare is a huge online learning community complete with thousands of classes in anything from design and photography to videography and freelancing, and pretty much anything else you can think of and we have got you guys a pretty sweet deal if you want to check it out. We're genuinely so excited to be partnering with them on What Culture Comics because not only is it like all the good parts of university without anybody in neon paint trying to sell you wristbands for a bad nightclub, it's also a platform we've been using ourselves to help make the videos you guys love to watch. Case in point, Ewan has finally learned how to green screen his washing out the back of his shots and I've been enjoying the silky tones of Marcus Brownlee as he talks me through the YouTube process. In his class, YouTube Success, Script, Shoot and Edit, he will you through what goes into making consistently high quality video content. As someone who does produce their own videos from start to finish, it's actually really valuable hearing from such an established voice on how to best maximise my potential. I mean, his recommendation on editing software has almost got me changing my whole workflow. We want you guys to be able to get the same experience and have access to these classes as well, so we're offering What Culture viewers a free membership trial of Skillshare Premium. Just click the link in the description and and if you're one of the first 1,000 to do so, you'll get unlimited access to thousands of classes from quality teachers. After that, a yearly subscription totally ad-free is less than $10 a month, which is insanely good value. Thanks again to everyone at Skillshare. Over the next few months, we'll have more about this, but for now, back to the video. 5. Bruce Wayne's Toys When looking at the history of gadgets incorporated into the Batmobile, there's been a whole list of nifty extras made available by the Dark Knight, Alfred, Harold, and other souls who've tinkered with these vehicles. These gizmos can be anything from a gas mask, a spare bat suit, a phone line straight to the GCPD, and a stupid amount of other quirks and tools of assistance. The Batmobile has been a constant of the Batman comics, movies, TV shows, animated series, video games, and more and each and every one of the multitude of Batmobiles seen have featured their own unique add-ons. 4. The Adam West and Burt Ward Batmobile one of the most famous versions of the Batmobile is the vehicle driven around by Adam West and Burt Ward's Batman and Robin in the beloved live-action Batman TV series of the 1960s. Built by George Barris, this car began life as a 1955 Ford Lincoln Futura, with Barris spending $15,000 to turn the vehicle into what we know and love. To create that memorable look, the Lincoln had a Ford Galaxy chassis added to it, and a five-gallon paint tin was used for the jet engine on the back of the vehicle. For that Batman series, and 1966's Batman the Movie, a total of six Batmobiles were used, with the original selling for a huge $4.62 million at auction in January 2013. Another little fun fact for you, George Barris was actually once pulled over and handed a speeding ticket whilst driving the Batmobile. Unfortunately, that day he didn't have his speeding ticket repellent spray to hand. 3. The 90s Movies Batmobiles the serials of the 1940s may have first brought the Batmobile to live-action life, but Michael Keaton's Dark Knight took things to a whole different level when he rocked up with his own Batmobile in Tim Burton's 1989 Batman picture. Now, the Batmobile was sleek, cool, and shiny, and it also came to typify the visual impact Burton's films would leave on Batman as a whole. Hand-sculpted and inspired by the racing cars of the 1950s, this Batmobile is legitimately capable of going from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3.6 seven seconds in real life. The Batmobile of those two Burton-helmed, Keaton-headlined offerings would also go on to influence the wheels driven around by Kevin Conroy's Dark Knight in the mesmerizing Batman the Animated Series and the greater DC animated universe that spawned from that stunning show. Elsewhere on the big screen, the Batmobile driven by Val Kilmer's Dark Knight in Batman Forever is able to project a 25-foot flame out of its exhaust, whereas the Batman and Robin vehicle tied to George Clooney's Batman is unique in that it only has one solitary seat inside. 2. The Tumbler 
Batman had previously had a Batmobile or two that were bulkier beasts, but the Tumbler felt so fresh and unique when it surfaced for the first time in 2005's Batman Begins. In terms of its real-life creation, production designer Nathan Crowley worked with Nolan to develop what was a mishmash of a Humvee and a Lamborghini. Considering how seamless CGI can look these days, and considering some of the insane things done by the Tumbler on the silver screen, it's a tad surprising to realise that every single Tumbler scene was done with a genuine physical vehicle rather than being assisted by any computer-generated shenanigans. Even after filming wrapped on Nolan's trio of bat flicks, the four running tumblers were regularly taken out of storage just to keep the engine ticking over and make sure that these behemoths were still running okay. 1. Harold Allnut now, as fantastic as this name is, it's also a little bit of an unknown one. Casual comic book fans or even casual Batman fans may never have heard of Harold Allnut before today. Harold was in and around the comics for 13 years by the time he was killed off in the Hush Ark. A mute hunchback, Harold was briefly featured alongside The Question, then taken under the corrupt wing of Penguin before he was then brought into the Bat family by Bruce Wayne. Why, you may ask? Well, Allnut was a genius when it came to engineering. Those engineering skills were put to work on the Batmobile, with Harold essentially becoming Wayne's live-in mechanic. Unfortunately for Harold, he would be manipulated by new rogue on the block, Hush, in 2002, who was really Bruce's old friend Thomas Elliot. Swayed by Tommy altering his hunchback's appearance and miraculously giving him a voice, Harold would be one of the many pawns Hush used to torment the Dark Knight, eventually ending up dead as Tommy shoots him right in front of Wayne. Well, what a happy note to end on, eh? And that brings us to the end of this list of 10 secrets of the Batman. Mobile explained. Let us know any more that you can think of in the comments down below. And remember to check out whatculture.com for more lists and articles like this every single day. I've been Amy from Whatculture, and I'll catch you next time.